But what I'm saying to you is this. Cheers. Cheers. Right, here we go. <laughs> How garden-tastic. Right. Well, hello there. Perfect drafters. How are we doing? Are we good? Good. Because Big Bold Reviews has got a classic keg in this little belter just here. Yes, I have. Now then, this one is to be respected just because of its history. So regardless of the fact, regardless of the fact, is that a good way of putting it? I don't know. Is there a better way? Regardless of the fact that I am not a massive great wit beer or wheat beer fan, however way you want to put it, this is the gold standard of wheat beers. Simple as that. Because this is the one that sets that global standard. I've had in the past the Jeanette Bio White wheat beer, and that was probably one of my least favorite kegs on the Perfect Draft. It's not really my style, but there's no denying that a hoe garden is absolutely heaped in history, is a drink, like I say, to be respected, and therefore I've got to review it. So I have, I've got the keg in there, it's a hoe garden, it's got to be worth a blast. So the price point is £33.90, and it is a 4.9% Belgian wheat beer. That's what we're looking at on Beerhawk. Now, as we know, price has been a bit of an ish recently, a bit of an issue, but this often is in the mix and match jobbo. So buy three of these or have this amongst some of the other mix and match kegs. Buy three of them and you get 10% off and buy six mix and match kegs and still get 15% off. That's always worth keeping a beaded little eye on, especially with the lack of that code, that precious code, that is no more. So it is steeped in history. So let's have a quantum style Sam Beckett leap back in the past, just to bring out and pull out some of those juicy little facts. 1445, that's when we've got to go back to when those monks experimented with the Caraco orange peel and cloves and coriander and maybe a bit of banana, lobbing it in with their wheat to make what was before, that sounds very quantum leap, doesn't it? What was once a very sour wheat beer, they wanted to make it a bit sweeter. And that's what they did with those additional ingredients. They didn't look back. From that point onwards, that's how they did that hoe garden, and it served them very well for hundreds, literally hundreds of years. It went on for so long that Hoe Garden, and that's the name of the village or town, I'm not sure how size it is, but that is the name of the place, and it became one of the largest brewers of the 18th century. At one point in Hoe Garden, there was 38 breweries. That's one for every 58 of its 2,000 residents. But a decade after the war, which saw many a brewery close down, obviously, it had a bit of a devastating effect on things. A decade after the war, they had to close down their last brewery. And then a decade later, a milkman by the name of Pierre Kellis, a milkman, yeah, decided, I'm gonna give this little baby a blast again. I'm gonna start brewing with the traditional hoe garden recipe. I'm gonna open a brewery, I'm gonna give it a go, and he did, and he nailed it, yeah? And he nailed it for 20 odd years. Unfortunately, there was then a fire. That fire meant they had to reach out to a very big company. Who should that be? But at the time it was Interbrew, obviously that came in, Bev. That's how it's on the perfect draft. That's how today, people, the hoe garden, is now on Baldy's bar, ready to be sucked. Well, it's not yet, because I've not poured it, but it will be ready to be sucked. The ingredients haven't changed for 570 odd years. Give or take a pinch of extra clove, or maybe a little bit of a extra peel of orange. Other things may have happened. But 
it's generally the same. That's what we're being told. We're going to have some snackage, and I am very, I've got a little bit of excitement in my voice because I am very excited about this snackage. In fact, I'm going to give you a little bit of a glimpse into future snackages. Snackages of big, bold reviews. Because I saw this on Facebook the other day. Because let's face it, there was a travesty last year. I think it was only last year. When the number one bar snack of all time, I'm going to say all time, I'm sticking the big bold head out there and saying of all time, the number one bar snack, the Snyder's jalapeno and pretzel pieces were discontinued from the UK. Yes, that gets you. It does. It's like a pretzel being stuck in the throat. It's bitter. It's hard to swallow. It's stuck. But could this be the saving grace? Could it be? Because in that most famous of shops that doesn't sell everything for a pound but yet is called Poundland, we have these, people. We have these. I think they're called Craxels. Craxel? Crack, crack, Craxel? Pretzel pieces. Now, this one here is garlic bread. Flavoured hard pretzels. That is the first one I picked up. I was obviously very much reminiscing with the Snyder's kind of green packaging and thinking, hey, what are these? These are pretzel pieces. It's in a green pack. Is it Snyder's? No, it's not, but it could be it. Then I saw it was garlic bread and I thought, that'll be all right. That'll be okay. That's a bar snack that I will try. I looked along a little bit further. Hope I haven't cracked too many of those. And I spotted these, a yellow pack. These are honey and mustard. Honey, mustard, onion. Now, any fan of the Snyder's range will know that you could get honey, mustard, onion Snyder's, and they were okay. They were pretty good. So I thought I'd also pick them up. I did, there they are in my hand. And then finally, the final box, as I looked over. Yeah, yeah, you know what the flavor is, people. They are jalapeno, come on, so. These are jalapeno pretzel pieces. These have got to be a proper contender for that Snyder's number one place within the UK. I'm not gonna say these are gonna beat Snyder's because they are a hell of a snack and they've got a hell of a lot to do to do that. But these are maybe what we need. We'll find out after I've had a sup at the Ho Garden. Let's have a look at that keg. Let's do the pour. Let's bring it in. Let's have a look at what it looks like. Let's sip it. Let's have a go. I'll tell you what I think to it. I'll tell you what I can taste. I'll then have a snack a <laughs> Have a go on them. I'll let you know what I think to them. I'll rate the beer. It's the same order of play, people. That's what it is. Let's get stuck in. Okay then, people. So there it is. There's the Ho Garden keg. Yeah, wit blanc. White beer, or white, white, it's white. That's what it is, naturally cloudy, yeah. White background, blue outline font that we're used to. And there's the wheat and barley and stuff like that coming in from the side. It's got some shields. It's got some shields above the Ho Garden font. And it's hands holding stuff, holding gardening equipment, I think. Yeah, don't know what it is. Don't know what they're holding. Maybe the gardeners out there can tell us what it is. It's your typical six litre keg. ABV, 4.9% volume. We know what it looks like now. Let's give it a pour. Okay then people, here we go. So I have, and actually it's the first video in a while that I've actually got the proper glass for the beer that's there. I have got the Hoe Garden glass. Just as with the keg, there is that traditional font that hasn't changed in all that time. Maybe it's got a bit bubblier. Has it? No. Can you remember doing bubble writing as a kid? That's irrelevant. Let's give it a little pour. Here we go. Right. Let's bring her in. Look at that. So there we go. 
you've got virtually no head on this at all. But there's that kind of famous haziness to the whole thing. Yeah. As we've uh, come to know and love. Come to know and love. Not much of a head. You don't get it on a hoe garden. Simple as that. You just don't. Does it look flat? Yeah. But, you know, we'll see what it's like. Is there any kind of carbonation to it? I don't know. Because I've not had it. Let's give it a blast. There we go, people. And I've um, I've moved the handle of me uh, subcompact because it looked like big bold peeboos or something. It looked wrong. Anyway, there it is. That's been poured. I'm gonna give it a tippy toppy too. I don't like the way it's got no head. Don't like that with my beer. But that's that's life, isn't it? That's the way it goes, giving it a little bit of a head here. Right. So I'm having a little look, and just that kind of, the massive haziness. Massive haziness? Can you get massive haziness? If you can, I've got it here. You can't see any bubs at all. That's just the way it goes, people. But what I'm saying to you is this. Cheers. Cheers. Right, here we go. <laughs> oh, God, fantastic. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. It is, it's well refreshing. I mean, yes, I've got it coming out of the pro. It's coming out at three degrees. That's what recommended temperature it is. So would taste exactly the same off the original. It's not my favorite type of beer. And it's unfair for me liking an IPA and liking many a lager to compare a wheat beer to any of those, because you just can't. You've got to compare it to other wheat beers. That's the way of the world. So compared, straight off the bat, compared to that Jeanette Bio White, this wins hands down for me. It's nice and refreshing. You definitely get that kind of orange peel jobbo in there. You definitely get the coriander. You do get all that. Carbonation wise, there's not a lot. There's not a lot. I think you could down a fair few of them. And like I say, it is nice and refreshing. I think a nice summer's day with a hoe garden, happy days. You know, the sun's shining now and that, that's going down pretty well. Considering I'm not a big fan of this style of beer, that ain't bad. Nice mouthfeel. Nice and smooth, really smooth. I know people lob a fruit in there, don't they? They'll lob a lime in there or lob an orange in there. Not sure if it's needed, not really, because it is a little bit fruity already. That Bio White, if you look back on that review that I did of that, I just could not get out of my head. Dishwater. It tasted of dishwater. This does not. And it would be almost blasphemy to say that it does, because that, it's a nice pint. It's a good pint. It's not a pint. That's half a pint, isn't it? It's half a pint. But still, it's a nice beer. Right. Before I grade it, people, I'm going to get into some snackage. And boy, am I looking forward to this snackage. Once again, I'm going to say it. Craxel pretzel pieces. I've gone straight in. For the kill, is there any blurb on the back? Where are they even from? They're imported into the West Midlands, but I think they are coming from the Netherlands. Anyway, let's see if I'm gonna be thanking you. There's no blurb on there. It basically just says, don't give them to small children. They may choke on them. So don't do that. Looks like there is, ah, oh, there is. There's a wasabi jobbo as well. And a cheddar cheese. And they're not the other two flavours. So there is another two flavours to the other two flavours that I've got. But anyway, let's get into these babies. I've gone for the traditional tear. Um, I think actually I did struggle with the Snyder's bag. Didn't struggle with these. Right, let's give it a snifty. Okay. Right, I'm not going to prejudge, but... 
the don't blow the snows off the same as the Snyders. But I can smell it. I'm gonna give it a shake. I'm gonna do everything I can to make this a belter. Because I know how much you people miss jalapeno Snyders. I know how much I do. So that's why I'm thinking this is a big moment. Yeah. Right. Okay, that, that's a, it's a good kind of finger full of pretzel pieces. They look very similar. If you could kind of, you know, bake them to the same kind of degree as Snyder's, that's what they've done. They've got to have got inspiration from Snyder's. Right. Please, let's give it a go. They're close. The close. Look. They're not Snyders, but they're close. They're good. They're very good. They're good. They've got a nice kick there. Very nice jalapeno kick slightly less maybe than the Snyder's, but only slightly. The other element that obviously comes into play, especially with a bar snack, is the crunch. The crunch, I would say, is slightly harder with these. They are slightly harder pretzel pieces. The size of each pretzel piece, very, very similar. If anything, these are a little bit bigger. I think I haven't seen so many little ones. But I think, honest, I think the reason, oh, that one had a bit more kick to it. I'll tell you what, the flavoring of these are good. Very good. They are the 98% there. I think that couple of percent off of what these are compared to Snyder's is for the reason why Snyder's were banned in the UK. And it is that palm oil. Because these are less oily. I mean, I can sit on my finger my finger, not got one finger, on my fingers, I, it's less oily than them Snyder's, without a shadow of a doubt. I think even amongst them, you can see that. I'll tell you what, they're good. Yeah. These are hell of a replacement. These are a hell of a replacement for Snyder's jalapeno pretzel pieces, and I am well happy with that. Blooming happy. I nearly swore there. I've never sworn on the channel, but I am well chuffed with them because let's not shy away from one fact, people. I got these from Poundland, and like I alluded to right at the start of the video, they weren't even a pound. These were 75 pence. 75 pence for an 85 gram bag of a 98% way of the there quality of a Snyder's pretzel piece, you have got to be happy with them. They are belters. Right there. Yes. That's what I'm saying. They're not blowing your face off. Snyder's didn't. But they've got a lovely crunch. They've got a lovely jalapeno kick. These are good. Wowzers. 75p. Let's bring that in as a factor. Let's bring it in as a factor because let's face it, with today's price pinch that we've all got, Snyder's weren't cheap. And yet these, I tell you, I'm going back down to Poundland. I'm sticking me boards up, my pub bar boards. I'm gonna lob a few of these on them. In fact, they have got like, you know, they weren't in, they weren't in the old hanger things, but they have got the, the punch through hanger thing. Like that. I mean, you could almost put one up in your bar and just slide them on. 
I'm looking forward to the other flavours. They are good. Well happy with them. Yes, I'm a little bit more excited about these pretzel pieces than I was the Hoe Garden. But that is, you know, it's no fault of the Hoe Garden. That's just the fact that I don't like the whipped beer, wheat beer, whatever beer you want to call it, white beer, bam bang, bang bang beer. I'm not so keen on that style of beer. Simple as that. Lovely stuff. Right. What am I going to give that? In the kind of big, bold, review style of just marking out of 10 compared to everything else. Because if you've watched my whole back catalogue of videos of perfect draft kind of kegs, you know, you may be a similar drinker to me. And if you are, you know, you like the odd IPA, you like the odd lager, you're not such a massive fan of these. In the big grand scheme of things, I would probably give that a six, right? But like I say, that is because I'm not a massive fan of this style. Now, if I was to mark this as a wheat beer, um, you know, I think you'd give it an eight. I really do think you could. Personally, you know, I like that bit more flavour from that thickness of the Franciscana. I just do. Especially the Royale one. You know, I don't think I'm going to get a milkshake at the end of this keg. But it's pleasurable. It's nice. It's refreshing. It's got that fruity citrus taste in there. It's kind of light, but yet a nice, smooth, refreshing drink. Nice mouthfeel. I'm saying cheers. If it's nice, hot weather goes down a tree. Good. Them. <laughs> Them. I'm going to give them a 10. I'm giving them a 10. They are absolute belters. Absolute beauties. They just are. And considering the fact, I know I would always give Snyder's Jalapeno Pretzel Pieces a 10. I just would. But, and they're just a little bit off them. Only a little bit. Only a touch. But they're a hell of a replacement. We can't get them in the UK now. We can get these. They are in Poundland and they are 75p. I know I've said it several times. I don't like to repeat myself too many times, but they're 75 pence. I mean, Martin Lewis, you know, I know he's always banging on about stuff and he's, he's helped a lot of people. He really has. You know, he's a top man and he's helped a lot of people save a lot of money. And in times of strife like this, you know, recession round the corner, things like that, you need people like him because listen to him and he will save you some money. But I'll tell you something, I'm here to give you some advice. If you want a good bar snack that's very cost effective, you can't go far wrong with them. Yeah. Money saving expert. 75p. Absolute belters. Right. Yeah. I'm giving them a 10. And I'm happy. I'm happy with them. The other reason I'm a little bit happy is that I had a very light lunch. So I've got calories to spare. Right. If you like that video, please give it a like. Please subscribe to the channel. We've got some more kegs coming up. I need to put an order in, and I know there are some new kegs that have been released, including a Game of Thrones jobbo this week. Yeah, pale ale, around 4.5%, was it? Something like that. That looks good, because it's from the old McKellar thing as well. Although the heated seats, I did find a little bit of a disappointment, I will give it a go. I want to get into getting the new kegs back on the perfect draft and getting them in there, but I had some of those older ones to review. I did. And I want to review every single one. So Hogarden had to come up at some point, and here it is. So I've got a fair few others to review. Please subscribe to the channel because you will see those if you do. But for now, Perfect Drafters, we've got another heat wave on the go. Get your kegs loaded. Have a go at them, but have an absolute belter of a weekend. Whatever you're doing, people. Have a beauty. Enjoy. Enjoy the sun. Enjoy whatever you're drinking. Whatever you like, just like it. Doesn't matter if you're firing down a Foster's. I don't care. 
enjoy it. Enjoy the heat. Enjoy a beer, whatever it is. But have a laugh, people, with whatever you're doing. Have a good one, people. Cheers, Perfect Drafters. Cheers. <laughs>